I've been altering tins for a long time and I just finished a new one so I thought it would be a good opportunity to do a video tutorial and include some of the other tins I've altered over the years. In this tutorial I'll cover hinging two Altoid tins together, an idea for how to use the leftover lids, and how to use the tins as a shadow box. The first thing I did was to remove the lid from the base of the tin. And on the side, you'll see that there is just a little piece of the tin that's been cut away from the base, and that's used to attach the lid to the base. So with a pair of needle nose pliers, I uh, bent that up and pulled the lid off. And then you have two options. One, either you can try to bend that piece back in place, or you can uh, do what I did, which is I used a pair of heavy scissors and just snip that area away. Now, if you cut that area away, you might still have just a little bit left over, and you can use those needle nose pliers just to try to bend that back in place. Now, if you're covering the, uh, the sides with paper like I am, it's more important to get that flat so that you don't you know, see this bulge. Um, if you're covering it with something dimensional or, or something that's going to be thicker, like tissue paper or something like that, then you know, it's not as important. You can kind of hide that with, the, with whatever you're putting on it. Now, once I do that, I'm going to, uh, I need to color the edges of the tin uh, anywhere where I think the paper won't cover. So just kind of on the edges uh, of, the, of the base, on the inside, and then on the back. And I usually go two different ways. You can either use alcohol ink or you can use patina paints. Uh, both work really well to stick to the tin. And I just use a coordinating color to go with whatever decorative paper that I'm using. For the inside, on the one side, I'm going to create a little shadow box. And on the other side, I'm going to have like an accordion folded little book uh, that will be attached to the inside and then will be tied down with some lace. And you can untie it and then open it up. Now to create the little, the little accordion folded book that goes inside, I started by cutting a strip of thin paper, pr like printer paper, uh, basically the, the length of the paper, 10 and a half uh, inches long at, by three and a half inches tall, which is the height of the tin on the inside. Now I chose to use the paper, the thin paper, because I don't want to create so much bulk because I'm going to be adding decorative paper and this kind of acts as a base. And since I'm going to have different paper on every single panel, um, I couldn't just accordion fold the piece of decorative paper. So this is just kind of an inside base that I will apply the decorative paper to the front and the back. Now, uh, I accordion folded it every two and a quarter inches, which is the width of the inside of the tin. And you're going to have, if you use the same size paper I did, you're going to have a little, little bit left over. And you can either cut that away or you can use that to attach another strip of paper. So it just depends on how many, um, how many folds you want and you be mindful of how much bulk you're gonna to add to each of the panels and also uh, think about how deep the tin is. Of course, if you don't do a shadow box on the other side, you can accommodate a pretty thick book. Now, um, you've got a couple choices here. Now, I want to have as much surface area as I can, so I am going to round the edges of the paper so that I get as much uh, paper in there as possible. Now you could cut the book smaller so that you did not have to round the edges to where you can get a whole square piece in there without butting up against those rounded edges. Now to do the, to cut those rounded edges to fit, you can either use the tin itself as a template uh, by just putting the tin up against the edges and then marking uh, the, the round part, or I've given you a template on my blog and you that there'll be a, uh, a link in the description area below that you can go over there and I've got a template for you. So you can just lay that template on top of your folded paper and it will help you cut those edges and make it super easy. Now I'm ready to add the decorative paper and as you can see I've added a different pattern to each one of the panels. Now that's going to be the front and then the back side I just went ahead and used uh, all of the same paper. Now you could uh, decorate both sides if you liked. I just chose to do just the front. And the papers I'm using are the ones that you see here, the Architecture 2. They're a 8x8 paper pad and the it's double-sided paper and most of the paper has um, uh, images on one side and then some kind of pattern on the back side. And so you've got lots of options on how to use the paper. Now the next thing I did was I inked all the edges just to finish them off. It kind of frames each panel. Uh, makes it look a little bit better and then of course since I've got this uh, 
this vintage look going on, it, it gives it more of a vintage look. And so I used, to ink that, I used the uh, Distress Inks by Rangers, the vintage photo color. Now, uh, now that I've done that, now it's time to do the fun stuff. I actually started decorating it and all of the stuff that you see here is paper. And so I've just laid on uh, different uh, images, uh, vintage images, uh, collaged them and glued them onto each of the panels. Now, the images that you see come from two new collage sheets that I have called Remnants of the Past 1 and 2. And they are loaded with all kinds of little miniature stuff, uh, everything from toys to photographs to uh, old clocks and suitcases and just tons of stuff, anything that, that you could use for something like this. And so there's two sheets of those. And you can see they are really good fit for smaller projects like this one. And they'd be great on ATCs. Now, once I get all the decorating done, now I'm ready to attach this to the tin. And you can see here, this is the, the side of the tin where I'm going to, to add this little book. Now you can see I've added some of the paper on the inside. We talked earlier about the inking of the, of the, uh, the tin around the edges. And now I'm just going to glue a piece of lace inside. Of course, you could use ribbon. And you don't have to worry about gluing it too well because once you glue the book in, it's really gonna hold that down. And now if you look at the book, if you look to the far right, the one with the teddy bear, that is gonna get glued all the way down inside that tin. And so now you can see it's glued in place and you can see it's a little teddy bear one. So that's gonna be the first one. And then here you can see just a bit, a little bit better look of how that's glued in the back there. And then now you can pull all of those, um, pull the book out, all the panels out and you can see everything. In the other side, the other 10, again, I papered the inside. You can see the ink, the edges are inked. And again, I used the same images uh, to add. But the difference in this is instead of gluing them flat down, I used double stick tape to pop them out. And so each image, as you're looking uh, in the back, it's popped out a little bit, and then the doll is popped out a little bit more in the back, and then the, the next doll is popped out a little bit more and then the book and then the other doll. So I just uh, kept adding uh, more uh, thicker layers of the double stick tape to, to move it all out. So by the time you get to the doll, um, the, the, the first doll in the front, that's almost to the edge of the ten. So that gives you like a nice dimensional look. Now the covers. I did the insides of the tin first before I worked on the covers and you'll see why in a minute when I show you the technique that I'm going, going to use for this. Now I papered the uh, outside of, of each of the tins and then again I collaged some of the images. These are flat so they're just glued to, and you see they're kind of glued to the center. I'm kind of avoiding the edges. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to add this uh, torn paper uh, technique to the top of this. So I'm gonna tell you how to do this torn paper look uh, where it looks like you're peeling the paper away to uh, reveal the images uh, behind and I started out by choosing two papers and um, you could choose three if you get more than it gets messy if you get more than three it's kind of hard unless you're tearing you're doing this on something much bigger than this um, two is plenty or you could just go with one and so I decided to use the brick image and then the flower image now if you look at the finished torn technique Notice that I see that you'll see the flower uh, on the top there and you'll see the brick. You'll see the uh, brick coming through the hole. So what you have to do to get that technique is you need to flip the brick over. So you can see that the one with the bottles and stuff on it, that's the brick flipped over. And then you see the other one, which is the flower. Uh, I've left that uh, face up and now I'm going to glue the flower one on top of the brick one and you're only going to glue just around the edges because you don't want to glue everything and then you won't be able to do the tearing and, and peeling technique. So you glue that, that uh, the, um, the flower one on top of the brick one and then you cut a big X and you can notice that if you look at the cuts that I did, I did this with an X-Acto knife, you can see that they're away from the edge so there's probably maybe a quarter of an inch and I'm just cutting a great big X and that's just so I can get in there and start doing the tearing. And now I'm tearing the points off of that X as the next step. And then once I've done that, I start peeling 
sections of it back and tearing it. Uh, and that way, I don't want to cut it all because I just get all these cut marks. So instead, I'm tearing all of these pieces back. And you can make those tears as detailed as you want. You can keep separating sections and tearing more and more, just depending on, on how much how torn you want it to look. And then once I get it torn, I'm going to start peeling back the paper. So first, I'm going to peel back and curl the edges of the flower paper. And then I'm going to peel back and curl the edges of the brick paper. Now, you can see the brick paper coming through. If I hadn't flipped the brick paper over, instead of seeing the brick when you pulled it through and pulled it over, you would have seen the, uh, the other side that had the images of the bottle. So that's why I had you flip it over. So you always have to really think about when you put your papers together, what am I going to want to see on the top is my top paper. And then when I start peeling this apart and tearing it and pulling it and pulling it through, what do I, images do I want to see on the other side? And so now you see that here. And you can see I've separated the two papers when I, uh, the torn papers when I, as I pull them through. And so you can see the back sides of the flower paper as well as now you can also see the brick. And then I just glue that on top of the images that I had collaged. So here you can see the, the finished, uh, the finished uh, look. And uh, I also added some uh, roses, some paper roses and some uh, stitched leaf ribbon to, to the front just to jazz it up a little bit more and just give it a little bit more dimension. And then uh, here you see the other one with the owl. And it's the same thing. You can see the torn look and I've added the flowers as well. Now you can see why I worked on the inside before I worked on the outside. If I had done the outside first, all of that would have been in the way while I was trying to work on the insides of the tin. And um, I would have I would have had to lay it down and it would have messed up all the curls. So I think it works a little bit better to do the inside first, if, at least if you're doing stuff like I did, and then do your outside. The last thing is to add hinges and a closure. And you can see here, I've added the hinges to the sides and you can see the decorative paper. I've just cut strips and glued those around uh, the edges of the tins. And um, the, the uh, hinges are just glued in place. I used E6000. And the thing, if you are gluing instead of poking holes through something and using brads to secure your hinge in place, you need to make sure that the paper or whatever it is that you're attaching to the tin is glued down well. Because if you don't and you open this, um, the hinges will pull the paper away from the tin unless it's glued down firmly. Um, so I just put the two tins together, made sure they were very even, and you wouldn't have to use three hinges. I just thought it looked good with three hinges. You could just use two. Or if you had a much larger hinge, you could use one. And um, these were brass. They were gold. And I used the same alcohol ink that I used for the edges um, of the tins to, uh, to distress those and, and change the color. And then to cover the holes, I just used some flat back, flat back beads to um, put over the hole so it looks like either there is a brad there. And then in the, the front or the other side, um, it's not a real closure. I have just attached a piece of filigree to one side of the tin. The tin stays together on its own, so I didn't really need an actual uh, a closure, but you could add some kind of a clasp. So again, I, I added it, I uh, painted it with the same Distress inks, and then um, I uh, glued it just to the one side so that way of course I could open it so you don't want to glue it to the both both sides. So that wraps up this particular tin. This vintage tin is one that I made back in 2012. It's a vintage theme as well and it's very similar to the one before. The differences are that each of the tins on the inside are shadow boxes. And then I've also um, cut chipboard covers for this. And in this case, there is, an, there is a closure that actually works. So I started by gathering all kinds of things from my stash, papers, uh, stickers, dimensional items, lace, that type of thing. And just like with the other, I started with the tins themselves. I removed the lids, I inked the edges, and then papered the inside and the outside. Then I started using uh, my little bits of ephemera to start building up the background of each of the tins. And in this case, you can see I've got some torn paper, a piece of music, uh, there's some writing. I attached a key with a stick pin. And then on the other one, you can see that I'm starting to build up the back by just 
uh, attaching some vintage items like a clock and a tape measure and some writing. Now, uh, just like with the other one, I want to pop the images up, some of the images up. So the little images of the little boy and girl, I'm adding double stick, stick tape and uh, to pop those images up. And you'll notice too that I've backed them with some, uh, with some uh, thin uh, cardstock just to make the image a little bit more stiffer to give it a little bit more support. And then of course I tape that to the back. And then once I get that in place, then I'm adding even more stuff. The little doll there is popped up from the little girl. I've stuffed a little bit of lace in the corner, added a few butterflies, and then you can see roses and other things going up the left side of the tin. And that just gave it a little bit more um, interest. And then for the little boy, um, once I put, in, <clears throat> put him in, same thing, I've added a sailboat, a bear, those are all popped up, the writing is popped up above him, lots of butterflies, and then the leaf, the, the stitched leaf ribbon, uh, the, this time I'm using a brown, is going up the side. And now the next step I did is I went ahead and hinged this together, same thing, I just held the two tins together, I glued my hinges in place, I inked these uh, just like I did the other ones, and then um, I didn't use flat back beads, I used brads, but I didn't go, I just glued them, I did not put them through the tin, and um, what I did is I clipped off the prongs so that you, uh, so I could just use the ends of them. And the only reason why I just don't go through the process of punching holes is because when you punch holes, it bends the metal, and then now you've got an area where you have to get that all flattened out. I do it every once in a while when I really need it to be secure and I'm concerned it wouldn't hold with glue. But if I think it'll hold with glue and my hinges move easily, then, um, then I'll go ahead and just glue it down with E6000. Now I flip it over and now I add this large hinge or this large closure. Uh, so that will actually, uh, you can flip it up and down to open and close. And you can see the other things that, that look like they're hinges. Those are just paper images um, that I've glued to the corners just to kind of, or the sides, just to kind of jazz it up a little bit more. And then on top of that, I have added those flat back beads that are um, uh, inked just like all the other hardware. And then here you can see the tin by itself. So if you didn't want to add the covers, you could uh, just finish up the fronts of the, um, of the tins and be done. But if you want to add the covers, you can see here I have cut them out of chipboard and you can see the dimensions that I used. Once I cut them, I covered them with the decorative paper and then used, uh, I think it was the vintage photo, I usually use the vintage photo when I'm doing distressing ink on, on the edges. And then just like with the insides, I'm starting building up my stuff that's flat on the cover. And here you'll notice the way I'm applying it, I'm applying these bits and pieces to make sort of a frame. And I think that looks makes it look more interesting. And so I've got all these papers and images of like jewelry, that sort of thing. And then uh, I'm building this other piece to go on top and I'm using these little uh, miniature frames and I'm framing things behind. I'm framing things like uh, uh, stuff from dictionaries and other little writing and images. And I also added a key in the back there where the butterflies are. And of course you could uh, frame dimensional things as well. Then I'm attaching that to the front of the cover. And then uh, in addition to that, I added a few more butterflies, the birds, and then you'll notice I've got some metal corners uh, on each end or each corner there. I've added those metal bits of uh, metal to that. And then once I get that, that done, I did not decorate the back in case you wanted to lay it down flat. Then I just simply glue the tins in between the two covers. And now you can see what it looks like when you open it up on the inside. And then you'll notice I also added some corner pieces on the inside of those chipboard covers. This one is called Birdie Darling. It's a little bit different in theme. It's constructed pretty much the same way as the other two that have come before. It has a uh, covers like it like the one before did, but instead of being pieces of chipboard that I cut out, it has die cut chipboard um, pieces. Now um, the inside again, same thing. Paper the the tins, ink them, put whatever you want inside of them. Uh, pop stuff up. I have dimensional stuff in there. I put the feet on so that's something new So if you you want to add something a little bit more to it, you can make it a little bit more elegant You could add feet and then um, Hinging it together now here. You can see how I've used a much larger hinge instead of smaller ones uh, Two or three smaller ones 
And then uh, this doesn't have a real closure. It's like the first book. It's just kind of two decorative pieces uh, glued to the side just to, you know, make it kind of give you the sense of a closure. Now looking at the front, the cover is made up of a chipboard die cut cage. And here you can see the picture of that cage and it comes with a back piece. So I uh, put paper on the solid piece and an image of the girl and then of course painted uh, the cage and put that on top. And then, uh, then I've added all kinds of ephemera. Um, I've added uh, uh, metal uh, flowers and a bird. And then uh, of course the writing Birdie Darling and then all kinds of um, paper flowers and a bow. And of course, I attach that to one side of the, the, the front of the tin. You can decide if you want that to be the front or the back because they're both, both sides are decorated. Now, if you look at what is the back side, in this case, the cover is made using this beautiful arch. And so I have painted the arch and I've attached the arch right to the back of the tin. So it didn't have a, a back piece of chipboard, although you could add one if you wanted to. Um, I just glued that onto the tin. And in addition to um, that, I've got decorative paper on the tin. I've got that little, looks like a bird fountain and the bird. And, and then of course that little metal bee. And then on the front of the uh, archway, I've got more, uh, more embellishment and with birds and lots of flowers. Now, another thing you can do is to add things to the top of the tins. And with uh, the cage being lower when it was attached to the tin than the archway, what I decided to do is to add some flowers and whatnot on the top of the tin. And that way, the, where the girl is, so as you are looking at the front of the, um, of the piece, you will see over the top of the cage and you will see those flowers that are glued to the top of the tin behind and to the uh, archway. This is an idea for you on how to use the lids that came off of the tin. And here you see I have made a little book tin just like the other ones, but it's assembled a little differently. And um, you see here it's the two so putting the two bottoms together and putting the two lids together and the closure is going to be and hinging what what would be the hinging will will be a ribbon and then inside is a um, is a book and that fits inside there with some that's where the images are mounted in uh, chipboard frames so the first thing i did was i started by adding a ribbon around the edge of the tins and then uh, I put the two tins together with the insides facing each other, just like it will be closed. And I took a long piece of red ribbon and glued the ribbon on the tins, going all the way across the top tin and then around and all the way under the bottom tin. And then there you can see what the ribbon looks like on the side. And then if you flip it over, um, you can see that I have uh, added uh, paper to the tin. Now I suggest that you just use the tin as a uh, template to uh, measure out the paper and then apply it to the tins. And so you can see now that you've got this thing that you can close and open. And then again, here is another view from the side with the embellishments on the top. Now, I would wait to do the embellishments uh, when you're done so that they don't, when you're working on the inside, they don't get in the way and get damaged while you're doing that. Now the removable book is various scenes from the Alice in Wonderland story. And I have collaged this, the scenes using uh, images, paper images, and then I have framed them with a die cut chipboard frame. And Alpha Stamps is carrying uh, three different kinds that fit Altoid tins. Uh, one is, has scalloped edges and that's what I used. And uh, the other one is an Alice in Wonderland set, which wasn't available when I made this book but it is now. And then there is a more Halloween Gothic um, set. And so basically I just painted these and framed out the, uh, the little scene from each of the Alice in Wonderland. Now in order to attach these together, I just basically put, I'm going to go with the, you know, the order of the story. So to assemble the book, I'm going to be doing a combination of gluing some of the, uh, the pages back to back 
and then also hinging some of the pages together. So I've made this little chart to hopefully make it as clear as I can how I actually put each one together. So the first one I started with was the Alice and Cal Caterpillar, and that has um, the Alice and the Caterpillar on the front, and on the back is just decorative paper. And since that would be the front of your book, you can put whatever you want on that. You know, you could say Alice in Wonderland or whatever. And then uh, the next page is the Tweedledee pages in front, and then the back is the Alice and the Cat page, and those two are glued back to back. And then if you look on this chart, the black uh, box represents a hinge. So then I added these small hinges hinging that first Alice and Cal Caterpillar card with its decorative paperback to the Tweedledee and Alice and Cat. Next, the next set of cards is I glued the Tea Party and the Alice with the cards, I glued those back to back. And then of course I hinged that one to the Tweedledee and the Alice and the Cat. And then the last one is the Off With Her Head and the back of that is decorative paper, so that will be the back of your book. And then again, I added another little hinge between uh, the Alice, the Tea Party and Allison cards with the off with her head. And so that makes up the little book. And the picture you see is it's sitting in the tin, but it is actually removable. Unfortunately, I just, I don't know why I never took a picture of the, the book outside of the tin. The front cover has all kinds of dimensional things. I have more of the images. I also have um, some roses, a heart stick pin, some leaves. You see the Alice Adventures in Wonderland banner, a clock, a pocket watch, I should say, a key, and then a book. And on the book are uh, little miniature pages um, Alice in, uh, from the Alice in Wonderland story. And I, uh, I actually have those for you on my blog, so if you want to use those, you, you can. And uh, then there's also a little teacup and a and a uh, mushroom. And the number of pages that I use really had to do with what would fit in the tin. So, you know, you based on what you're doing, you'll have to decide how many pages will work for you. And just like the other tins, you could have glued um, one of the pages, the first page to the tin, or the first and the last page to the tin, and then uh, kept them in the tin and the, so you could just flip through them. Now the last tins are shadow box tins with a facade on the front, and these are two circus theme tins. And I did these a long time ago, back in 2011. And you can see that the front is a image of a of a picture frame. And if you look at the back side, then you can more easily see the tin itself. Now outside of the uh, the banner and the picture frame. Um, all the other images come off of uh, various collage sheets at Alpha Stamps, and I'll, I'll give you the links for those. And I, I have a lot of uh, picture frames like this in my digi kits that could be used to, to do the same kind of thing. But in the very back of the, of the uh, tin are curtains, and then there's curtains towards the front glued to the back of the frame. And then inside you see the elephants. Now, the way I stood those elephants up inside the tin was to put a flat bead behind them, I guess it was a square bead, behind them, and glued that to the image behind, and then the bottom I glued to the tin. And then, of course, I've got a couple images on the outside. And the wheels, those are just uh, spools, thread spools, empty spools, wooden spools, and then the covers are just a, a button, and the shank fits right into the hole of the spool. And then um, if you take a look at the back, you can see that I've papered it with decorative paper. And of course, you can see the banner. I, I mounted that banner using toothpicks. And I made two small holes at the top of the tin and to insert those toothpicks. And then um, the flags, I just used uh, jump rings. And I just I think this was something I had a long time ago, these little metal flags. Um, so those were in my stash. And I, I don't remember what company makes that. So that's the tiny show on Earth. The next one are acrobats. And again, I have used the same spools and the same buttons for the wheels. And um, I've used a picture frame again. And a lot of the images you see again are from uh, Alpha Stamps collage sheets. So I've got a scene in the very background of people watching in like a theater. And then I've got uh, curtains and other decorative crown molding there. and then. Other images at the top with the tra trapeze artist in the circle. I've ad added some balloons, and then you see another image. I've taken a string, and I've wrapped that around an image of a woman around her leg so that it hangs there. 
And then the woman that's going through the ring, uh, that's a piece of wire that is glued to the back of the um, frame. And then the ring is a curtain ring, like the, the, the white little white curtain rings. And then she's glued in place um, where she touches that ring. And then the stars, those are stick pins. You can also see that I've used some metal embellishments uh, at the top on each side and then at the bottom. And I've just painted those red and green to go with everything else. And now if you take a really deep look inside, you'll see two gymnasts flying in the air. And I have used those uh, two little handles. I believe Alpha Stamp still carries those. Um, those two little handles. And they're, the holes of the handles have a wire. And that wire goes up and is glued at the top of the tin. So you can't see it. And uh, so that the, the so that those rings are hanging just below that curtain, so the curtains hold those rings. And then I uh, I have glued the um, the girls to each of those rings. So now it looks like they're the trapeze artists are in there, go flipping around. And now if you look at the back, um, again I've covered this with paper and images from collage sheets. And you can see I've backed the woman with uh, paper and the balloons as well. And then I've just got some more. I've used some Dresden uh, frames and um, I framed out some images from the collage sheets. And then uh, I've also used some mini, little mini, mini spools to decorate uh, that sit on top of the tin. And then you can see I've added another image above that. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's, it's a little charm and it's a charm of a seal with, uh, with a ball on its nose. That wraps up the altered tin tutorial. Um, in terms of supplies, Alpha Stamps is carrying all of the supplies that I used for the very first tin, and they still have some of the supplies that I used for some of the older tins. And um, of course, uh, I will have a, a blog post that goes along with this that will have the supplies for the first project. It will also have links and information for supplies of the other projects where available. And then uh, you can also get information on my collage sheets. And there's also links to a lot more pictures if you want to sit and look at some of the stuff in detail. And um, I'll also give you the links on that uh, post to go to the older post that the original post that I made for these others because there's good tutorials and there's, there's some more information. And of course, there's also some free images on some of them. Um, so at the bottom of this description area, there will be a link to the main blog post.